Are you a Whovian? Okay. A Whovian? Is that what they're Whovian. called? That's what they're called. I thought they were called Whoies. <laughs> I guess I'm not <laughs> then. Uh, no, I have watched Doctor Who. I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid. I thought it was brilliant. But, I mean, television itself was brilliant back then because the alternative was whittling a stick or eating some coal, you know. Um, but, no, I'm not a... I'm not a Hoover. <laughs> have you met any other Doctors? Yes, I've met... Yes, I've met several Doctor Who's. And it, um, what was the previous one called? David Tennant. David Tennant I've met several times. He seems like a nice bloke. And then I met the old bloke who was the doctor after John Pertwee, uh, forgotten his name. He lives near me somewhere, I think. We'll look it up and put yeah. it in after. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, sort of round face, that cheerful sort of bloke. Anyway, yes. They're not really Doctor Who, you know that, don't you? They're just actors. They're just very good actors. When you say I've met Doctor Who, that's a bit yeah. like saying I've met Superman. It's not, it's yeah. not really yeah. Superman, it's no. a man in a costume, <laughs> pretending. So Doctor Who's the same age as you? Doctor Who, the programme is, yeah, well it's about, I think it was uh, October, November 1963, the first one. Something like that. It's, it's six months or so younger than me. And you remember watching it growing up? I remember watching it growing up very much. Daleks were the most interesting thing in the world when I was a small boy. And those uh, slimy things that came out of the sea and Doctor Who's assistant and the TARDIS was an exciting idea. Um, yeah, it was great. And black and white. Music by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. Do you, what would you be doing in a parallel universe? <laughs> well... It, I've talked, I've talked about this with Professor Brian Cox himself, the idea of parallel universes and that everything that is possible will happen. But the, the slight flaw with the, with the idea of what am I doing in a parallel universe is that let's go all the way back to, well, not even to me being born, let's go back one year to me driving along in the car or something. Um, all the quantum possibilities were possible but is that person in the parallel universe still me in that case? Hasn't it become someone else? Or maybe I'm dead? Or and if, So if you go all the way back to when I was born, all the quantum possibilities would have made me a girl or with different colour hair and just a completely different entity. So I don't believe I'm in a parallel universe. So there could be an endless number of parallel universes. Well, I suppose there must be, yeah. Or it's an inconceivably big... One, but where are they? See, the, the, the interesting thing about about the parallel, not not the not the infinite space theory, the idea that there's they are around us, and it's because of quantum physics. Maybe that explains why some people see ghosts. I wonder if briefly they look into a parallel universe. But then, why is not always, but generally, the ghosts that people claim to have seen always relate to what's happened in this life and this world that we know about? If they were from a parallel universe, they wouldn't be, would they? So that theory is rubbish. Yeah. Like Ouija boards. Yeah, well, I think Ouija boards have just been moved around by people's kneecaps under the table, aren't they? With magnets and things. Yeah. yeah. I still wouldn't do it, though. I knew some people who did get into that sort of stuff, and they became quite deeply disturbed. Have you been to a seance? Not a, not, not a proper one, no. Spooky? It is, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I really like it. I don't particularly need to commune with the dead, not literally. I can commune with their legacy. I don't really believe those people who say they, they're playing Beethoven on the piano and then suddenly Beethoven comes and stands next to them. Not literally. I think you are visited by the spirit of the composer if you play music, or the artist if you look at a painting, or, or the engineer if you operate a machine, or something like that, but I don't think that that person literally appears to give you some handy hints. No. Bollocks. What about time travel? Well, time travel is another one of those things which is technically possible, um, but philosophically it's full of all sorts of problems, isn't it? Because if you go back into the past and change something, but maybe you travel back to the past in a different universe, but then how would you know it was the past? In a different universe, a parallel universe, what's to say that everything 
developed in the same way and at the same pace. A parallel universe might still be in the Stone Age because nobody discovered how to melt bronze around a fire. And yet another one might be capable of intergalactic travel. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. A bit mind-bending. It is a bit. I think it's probably the sort of thing that you shouldn't worry about. You should probably just have a drink instead. There is a parallel universe within a bottle of gin, I find, and a very stimulating and exciting one. All human beings exist in two... well, not all, because some don't drink, but a lot of... certainly everybody I know exists in two states. Their normal state and their more truthful, surreal, drunk state. And if you're, the worst, the worst experience in the world is being sober at a party where everybody's pissed, obviously. But if you can do that, you can effectively look from one universe into another because you see all your friends in their other state, their other parallel existence, whilst you are still rooted in the regular one. I find that quite interesting. It's good, it makes good observation. Mm. You learn a lot. Society has so many layers of convention and taboo and all the rest of it, but a bottle of gin just goes through it all like an icebreaker through the poles. 